North Korea today said it would never relinquish its missile and nuclear arsenals and called new United Nations sanctions against the country a, quote, panicky American-led response to its growing military might. In a statement, the North Korean foreign minister also threatened retaliation, quote, thousands of times and hinted at a possible attack on the United States. The sanctions were drafted by the U.S. and adopted by the U.N. Security Council at an emergency meeting on Saturday. Here's the meeting. All in with. The 8,019th meeting of the Security Council is called to order. The provisional agenda for this meeting is non-proliferation, Democratic People's Republic of Korea. The agenda is adopted. In accordance with Rule 37 of the Council's Provisional Rules of Procedure, I invite the representative of the Republic of Korea to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. The Security Council will now begin its consideration of Item 2 of the Agenda. Members of the Council have before them document S-2017-674, containing the text of a draft resolution submitted by the United States of America. The Council is ready to proceed to the vote on the draft resolution before it. I shall put the draft resolution to the vote now. Will those in favor of the draft resolution contained in document S-2017-674 please raise their hand. The result of the voting is as follows. The draft resolution received 15 votes in favor. The draft resolution has been adopted unanimously as Resolution 2371 of 2017. I shall now give the floor to those members of the Council who wish to make statements after the vote. I give the floor to the representative of the United States of America. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> exactly one month ago, I came before members of the Security Council and declared it was a dark day for the world because of the dangerous and irresponsible actions of North Korea. Almost one week ago, I said the days of talking were over and it was time to act. Today, the full Security Council has come together to put the North Korean dictator on notice. And this time, the Council has matched its words and actions. The resolution we've passed is a strong united step toward holding North Korea accountable for its behavior. Today, the Security Council increased the penalty of North Korea's ballistic missile activity to a whole new level. North Korea's irresponsible and careless acts have just proved to be quite costly to the regime. This resolution is the single largest economic sanctions package ever leveled against the North Korean regime. The price the North Korean leadership will pay for its continued nuclear and missile development will be the loss of one-third of its exports and hard currency. This is the most stringent set of sanctions on any country in a generation. These sanctions will cut deep, and in doing so, will give the North Korean leadership a taste of the deprivation they have chosen to inflict on the North Korean people. Nuclear and ballistic, missiles, nuclear and ballistic missile development is expensive. The revenues the North Korean government receive are not going towards feeding its people. Instead, the North Korean regime is literally starving its people and enslaving them in mines and factories in order to fund these illegal nuclear programs. Even as famine looms on the horizon, even as the regime continues to ask for international assistance to cope with devastating floods and a possible drought later this year, their displays of aggression take precedence 
over their own people. Even as we respond to the North Korean nuclear threat, the United States will continue to stand up for the human dignity and rights of the North Korean people. It is the continued suffering of the North Korean people that should remind the Security Council that while this resolution is a significant step forward, it is not nearly enough. The threat of an outlaw, nuclearized North Korean dictatorship remains. The unimaginable living conditions of so many of the North Korean people are unchanged. The North Korean regime continues to show that widespread violations of human rights go hand in hand with threats to international peace and security. I thank each and every one of my colleagues who worked so hard to bring this resolution to a vote. I have previously pointed out that China has a critical role to play on matters related to North Korea. I want to personally thank the Chinese delegation for the important contributions they made to this resolution. While the Security Council has done good work, the members of the Security Council and all UN member states must do more to increase the pressure on North Korea. We must work together to fully implement the sanctions we impose today and those imposed in past resolutions. The step we take together today is an important one, but we should not fool ourselves into thinking we have solved the problem. Not even close. The North Korean threat has not left us. It is rapidly growing more dangerous. We've seen two ICBMs fired in just the last month. Further action is required. The United States is taking and will continue to take prudent defensive measures to protect ourselves and our allies. Our annual joint military exercises, for instance, are transparent and defense oriented. They have been carried out regularly and openly for nearly 40 years. They will continue. Our goal remains a stable Korean peninsula, at peace without nuclear weapons. We want only security and prosperity for all nations, including North Korea. Until then, this resolution and prior ones will be implemented to the fullest to maximize pressure on North Korea to its ways, to change its ways. Today is a good day at the United Nations. We will need many more such days in order to peacefully resolve the crisis that has been created by North Korea's dangerous and illegal actions. As I've said before, time is short, but today we have taken one step in the right direction. Thank you again to my colleagues and their teams for their action and support towards sending a strong message to the North Korean regime. I would like to thank the representative of the United States of America, and I now give the floor to the representative of the United Kingdom. Thank you, Mr. President. North Korea is no longer a threat faced by a single country or a single region. It is instead a threat that confronts us all. These two tests in the last month were of an intercontinental missile, extending the threat much further than before to many more countries. In a world where North Korean missile tests seem routine, let me be clear, this is not business as usual. Make no mistake, as North Korea's missile capabilities advance, so too does their contempt and disregard for this Security Council. We must meet this belligerence with clear, unequivocal condemnation and with clear, unequivocal consequences. Today, Mr. President, we have banned North Korean exports of coal, iron ore, lead, and seafood. These are the lifeline exports that sustain Kim Jong-un's deadly aspirations. In simple terms, should the North Korean regime continue its reckless pursuit of an illegal missile, missile program and a deadly nuclear program, they will have vastly less resources to do so. We've also capped the number of foreign workers from North Korea. Every year, DPRK sends thousands of ordinary workers overseas. They often endure poor conditions and long hours, and their toil serves to provide critical foreign currency for North Korean government coffers. This is undoubtedly a form of modern slavery, and today we have taken the first step to ending it. The world will now monitor and curtail work authorizations for these desperate expatriates. And for those who are already a victim of this abusive system, trust that the United Kingdom will continue to work
toward a complete end to North Korea's institutionalized modern slavery. Mr. President, North Korea bears full responsibility for the measures we have enacted today. By acting in flagrant violation of its legal obligations, by going against the will of the Security Council expressed in countless resolutions, North Korea has chosen the path it now finds itself on. It is a path that at a minimum will lead to further suffering for its own people, and at most could prove to be catastrophic for the whole world. It does not have to be this way. North Korea should forgo the path of provocation, forgo the path of further escalation. There is no reason why the people of North Korea cannot share the normal, prosperous life of their neighbours. The world would welcome them, not threaten them. So in this chamber, let us once again call on North Korea to halt and reverse its nuclear and missile development programmes. Let us once again call on them to prioritise the well-being of their people over their illegal and destabilising military programmes. North Korea's security and well-being do not depend on nuclear weapons. They do not depend on far-reaching missiles. They do not depend on a myth of self-sufficient defiance of the wider world. To live in constant tension with the world cannot be in the interests of North Korea's regime, let alone its people. Mr President, we have taken a step forward. We have spoken with a unified voice that we are ready to act in an unprecedented way in response to North Korea's reckless nuclear pursuit. Every country must ensure that these measures are adhered to. Every country must live up to our word. This time, there is too much at stake. We simply cannot afford to fail. Thank you. Yes, even. I would like to thank the representative of the United Kingdom, and I give the floor now to the representative of France. You have the floor, sir. Monsieur le Mr. President, France welcomes the unanimous adoption of Resolution 2371, which strengthens the sanctions imposed by the United Nations against North Korea in the wake of the ballistic missile launch, which occurred on 3 and 28 July last. We thank the United States for their leadership in the conduct of the negotiations, as well as for their unwavering commitment on this dossier, which today more than ever before is of critical importance for international peace and security. North Korea has for years now been at an accelerated pace, accel building a nuclear and ballistic missile program initiated at the highest level of the regime. It is methodically striving to acquire an operational nuclear arsenal at the cost of its own people. The Launches in recent weeks were another milestone in the threat posed by the North Korean program by clearly demonstrating Pyongyang's determination to, to bring the entire international community within the range of its missiles. This is an unacceptable situation which threatens the security of us all. Sir, we will not hesitate. This is a global threat. And beyond this threat, this grave and direct threat which is being posed, the whole of the non-proliferation regime is imperiled as it constitutes the framework for a collective security system and the very bedrock of the system. So weakness is not an option. And for this reason, France's conviction has from the very beginning been that only a strong position and a firm position can help pave the way to a political and diplomatic strategy which in itself is the only possible solution to this crisis. In this context, sir, it is more than ever before urgent to put an end to the North Korean nuclear and ballistic program and to bring Pyongyang to the negotiating table. However, despite our repeated warnings, North Korea has in recent months ceaselessly flouted all the calls of this Council and defied the whole of the international community. Given the gravity of the threat looming before us all today, it is urgent to collectively demonstrate our authority for only diplomatic and economic pressure to the maximum extent 
can halt pursuit of the program and can prompt North Korea to turn to the negotiating table and to help bring about a peaceful solution to this crisis. Sir, through this resolution, beyond the categorical condemnation of the unjustifiable actions by North Korea, the Council has two complementary and additional initiatives being put forward. Another group of individuals and sanctions at the heart of the regime and its programs are now being sanctioned, and there is an embargo for all key sectors of activity, including the financing for Pyongyang's programs. These measures can generate lost savings of $1 billion per year for the regime. Clearly, this can change the situation. It underscores the scope of the mechanisms at the disposal of the Security Council when it acts in a unanimous manner, as is the case today. It also provides for a humanitarian exemption clause to mitigate the repercussions on the North Korean people who are not being targeted by these measures. This new resolution is not only a determined response and a decisive response, but is a further warning. The dangerous and irresponsible push of the regime, which is irrational and methodical in its goals, this must be put to an end. North Korea must become aware of the fact that if it continues to escalate and engage in provocations, we will have no other choice but to further step up pressure, and we stand ready to do so. That is one of the me messages we are unanimously delivering today. As we repeatedly stated, sanctions are not an end in themselves, but a means to compel Pyongyang to meaningfully return to the dialogue. Given the reckless, unjustifiable stubbornness of the regime, today there is no other solution than firmness to prompt the regime on the path to reason and on that basis to pave the way for a political and diplomatic solution to this crisis. Thank you. I say this I would like to thank the President of France for his brief his statement, and I give the floor to Ukraine. Thank you, Mr. President. Ukraine welcomes the unanimous adoption of Resolution 2371. We commend the efforts of those delegations who were involved in drafting and putting the text to the vote under the strong leadership of the United States. North Korea's advance in nuclear and ballistic missile programs is all but the most significant proliferation challenge of our time. Ukraine condemns in the strongest terms Pyongyang's continuous illegal activities. Besides highly visible manifestations in the form of nuclear tests and missile launches, there is also an intricate system of sanctions evasion to circumvent, circumvent restrictions and prohibitions in place. Today's resolution not only strengthens the already existing regime, it reinforces it with additional sectoral and targeted sanctions and clarifies some measures imposed by the Council earlier. It also unambiguously confirms the Council's openness to dialogue on peaceful and diplomatic solution on, to the situation of the Korean Peninsula and its intention to avoid affecting the North Korean population. Ukraine has always been committed to effective multilateral actions against proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. Our collective decision today clearly demonstrates the Council's Council's consolidated, and I, I emphasize consolidated, and firm stance to respond decisively to the existing threat to the global non-proliferation regime. Furthermore, I wish to reiterate the key importance to prompt, of prompt and comprehensive implementation of the respective, respective Council's resolution, resolutions by all member states to make sanctions bear fruit. Joint actions at the global level are required to exclude the risk of further provocations and curb rampant nuclear and missile ambitions of the DPRK. Thank you. Could I say a moment? I would like to thank the representative of Ukraine, and I give the floor now to the representative of Uruguay. Thank you, Mr. President. Uruguay voted in favor of Resolution 2371, and we hail its uh, approval uh, uh, it's unanimous approval. The unity of the members of the Security Council on this matter is essential to provide a response to the serious threat uh, uh, that uh, 
has represented for international peace and security the defiance and obstinacy of North Korea in continuing with its nuclear and ballistic missile programs. Last July, there were two Uh, ballistic missile launches, intercontinental missile uh, uh, launches in the same month. Two, two launches, I, re I repeat. Now, the DPRK has uh, flagrantly uh, did this in flagrant violation of all the resolutions of this council. But if this wasn't uh, enough of an abuse, then this also undermines the common good and the spirit of uh, of a peaceful coexistence that prevails in this organization. Uruguay reiterates once again uh, the need for the government of North Korea to comply with all the resolutions of the Security Council and to abandon its nuclear ambitions. As was stated in the past few days during the uh, briefing session entitled General Questions Pertaining to Sanctions, Improving the Effectiveness uh, of the United Nations sanctions. Um, as I said, it, was, it is necessary for sanctions regimes to be effective. And this effectiveness should be understood as uh, the, the full, the achievement of the goals in full that the sanctions uh, are uh, seeking to achieve. Sanctions regimes should be designed uh, as an instrument that allows the Security Council to achieve a goal. And to be effective, this instrument should be complementary to the use of other instruments, such as uh, mediation and dialogue. The goal of uh, the sanctions regime imposed on North Korea should uh, uh, strive for the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula in a peaceful manner. Saying this, I am referring, Mr. President, to what my delegation has already stated regarding the need to work uh, uh, for the benefit of reducing, easing tensions on the North Korean Peninsula and to make every possible effort to uh, return to the path of dialogue in order to find a definitive solution to this very serious situation. By the same token, it's uh, important to have a greater commitment and determination of member states to comply with international obligations and uh, with comply with the sanctions imposed by the Security Council, and thus, at the same time, uh, seeking to avoid th adverse humanitarian consequences uh, on the North Korean civilian population in this case. Lastly, I would like to uh, reaffirm that Uruguay uh, is committed and determined to continue working towards a peaceful, diplomatic, and political solution for the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Thank you very much. I would like to thank the representative of Uruguay for his statement, and I give the floor now to the representative of China. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Relevant Council resolutions contain explicit provisions against any launches by the DPRK using ballistic missile technology. China is opposed to the DPRK's launching activities, which are in violation of Council resolutions and are in defiance of the will of the entire international community. China has always insisted on realizing the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, upholding peace and stability on the peninsula and are seeking a solution through dialogue and a consultation. China has always been firmly opposed to chaos and conflict on, on the peninsula. In our view, these, in essence, are what Resolution 2371 is all about. The fact that the Council adopted this resolution unanimously demonstrates that the international community is united in its position regarding the nuclear issue of the peninsula. There are three major components in this resolution. First, further sanctions against the DPRK's nuclear and missile program. Second, the resolution does not intend to cause negative impact on activities not prohibited by the resolution, such as economic activities and cooperation, food and humanitarian assistance. Third, it calls for the resumption of six-party talks commits to finding a solution through peaceful, diplomatic and political means, and stresses the importance of de-escalating tension on the peninsula by the parties concerned. China believes that these forms are part and parcel of this resolution, and all the parties should implement the provisions contained in the resolution fully and earnestly. 
China has been making tireless efforts to promote denuclearization of the peninsula and to uphold peace and stability on the peninsula. On July 4th this year, China and Russia issued a joint statement on the issue of the Korean Peninsula. Both of our two countries put forward a roadmap for resolving this issue, which is based respectively on China's idea of dual approach, which calls for parallel efforts on moving forward both the denuclearization on the peninsula and establishing a peace mechanism on the peninsula on the initiative of suspension for suspension, which calls for DPRK's suspension of its nuclear and missile activities and for U.S. and our kids' suspension of their large-scale military exercise and on Russia's step-by-step -step approach. This China-Russia joint initiative is realistic and feasible. It aims at tackling both the symptoms and the root causes of the problem and seeking a solution through an integrated approach. We hope this initiative will get response and support from relevant parties. China has taken note that the United States has recently indicated once again that it is not seeking a regime change nor a regime collapse in the DPRK. And it is in no hurry to push for reunification of the peninsula and that its troops will not push through the 38th parallel. It is our hope that the U.S. side will translate these four no's into concrete policies towards the DPRK. Beefing up military deployment on the peninsula is not in the interest of realizing denuclearization of the peninsula and maintaining regional peace and stability. The deployment of the third system will not bring a solution to the issue of the DPRK's nuclear testing and missile launching. What it will, what it will do is to seriously undermine the strategic balance of the region and as such is detrimental to the strategic security interest of regional countries, including China. China strongly urges parties concerned to halt the process of this deployment and dismantle relevant equipment. Realizing denuclearization and durable peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula is in the interest of all the parties. China urges the DPRK to respect the relevant council resolutions and cease taking actions that might further escalate tension on the peninsula. We hope the parties concerned will immediately take effective actions to prevent the situation from further escalating, create conditions for the resumption of talks, and exert efforts to bring back at an early date the nuclear issue of the peninsula to the right track of seeking a peaceful solution through dialogue and consultation. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank uh, the ambassador of China for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Mr. President, the Russian Federation supported the adoption of the Security Council Sanctions Resolution 2371 against the DPRK. We understand the need to halt Pyongyang's missile and nuclear program, which is unacceptable to us. We share the feeling of neighboring states in the region. The ballistic missiles, which were launched without warning from North Korea, are pose a major risk to marine and air transit in the region, as well as to the lives of ordinary civilians. We call upon the North Korean government to end the banned programs and to return to the NPT non-proliferation regime and the IAE oversights, as well as to join the Chemical Weapons Convention. All must understand that progress towards denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula will be difficult so long as the DPRK perceives a direct threat to its own security, for that is how the North Koreans view the military buildup in the region, which takes on the forms of frequent, wide-ranging exercises and maneuvers of the U.S. and allies as they deploy strategic bombers, naval forces, and aircraft carriers to the region. Another destabilizing factor in the region is the scaling up in North Korea of the THAAD, the U.S. anti-missile defense elements. We repeatedly noted not only this constitutes an irritant, but this also undermines the overall military balance in the region and calls into question the security of neighboring states. We would like to hope that the U.S. Secretary of State's assurances were sincere, that the U.S. is not seeking to dismantle the existing DPRK 
situation or to, va to forcibly unite the peninsula or military intervene in the country. However, we are concerned that our uh, proposed our paragraph in the draft resolution was not supported. The possible military misadventures by any side are liable to cause a disaster for regional and global stability. We stress, Mr. President, that the additional restrictive measures imposed through this resolution against the DPRK cannot be an end in themselves. They need to be a tool for engaging this country in constructive talks. It is not possible to settle the Korean issue through sanctions and pressure being brought to bear on Pyongyang alone. The resolution must be a part of a political strategy which is yet to be crafted and reached agreement on, and the DPRK must be engaged in this. Sanctions mustn't be used for economic asphyxiation of the DPRK, nor to deliberately worsen the humanitarian situation. This especially applies to illegal unilateral restrictions which strike civilian sectors which are unrelated to the military and nuclear programs of the country. Such sanctions significantly deteriorate the living conditions of the North Korean people. And incidentally, this is something which UN humanitarian agencies are warning about. The practice shows the destructivity of unilateral measures and the approach when as a universal means of settling these issues instead of diplomatic tools when the sanction stick is used. It is clear that in order to normalize the situation on the Korean Peninsula, we need a comprehensive approach which includes both an end to the missile and nuclear tests by the DPRK as well as a rejection of stepping up military infrastructure and reduction of the scale of the exercises and maneuvers. There is a need to create trust among states in the region. We must abandon the obsolete, ineffective algorithms for, solu for addressing the nuclear program in Korea, and we must address this issue through, un through unique, creative approaches. There needs to be dialogue and negotiations, and that is the thrust of the Russian and Chinese proposal vis-a-vis -vis the dual freeze and parallel progress. We would like to recall that our, uh, uh, our country is in drafting a roadmap which prevents the threat or use of force and proposes a comprehensive solution to all problems in uh, the peninsula, including the nuclear one, through political diplomatic ways without preconditions, and through political talks and through the resumption of six-party talks. These are ideas which warrant attention as a possible starting point to break the deadlock and to resume negotiations. We must find links and ways to engage in dialogue with the DPRK leadership to prompt meaningful dialogue on the nuclear and, and missile issues. Once again, we'd like to draw attention to the joint Russo-Chinese statement on settlement of the situation on the Korean Peninsula dating for July. Sir, we would like to draw attention to some contentious issues in the resolution. Of course, Pyongyang is violating the sanctions against it, but this is not. But it is not providing WMD components to non-state actors. There is no direct link between implementation of Council Resolution 1540 and official Pyongyang's actions. The practice of this reference in the context of sanctions must be ended. This is counterproductive for the resolution itself above all. Sir, today more than ever before, it is important to jointly seek a political solution to the range of issues plaguing the Korean Peninsula. The sanctions pressure following today's resolution has been exhausted. We stand ready to work collectively here. At the same time, the UN must step up efforts in delivering humanitarian assistance to the people of the DPRK. Uh, at our insistence, the relevant exemptions enable us to further address this. Sir, thank you. أشكر السيد السفير ممثل الاتحاد الروسي على إحاطته أعطي الكلمة الآن إلى السيد السفير ممثل السنغال فليتفضل I now give the floor to the representative of Senegal Mr. President the delegation of Senegal uh, hails the unanimous adoption by the Security Council of the United Nations of Resolution 2371 on uh, nuclear non-proliferation in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and welcomes the constructive spirit that prevailed over its negotiation uh, under the leadership of the United States delegation. With this resolution, the Security Council has strengthened for the second 
time this year and the third time in less than uh, 10 months, uh, the sanctions measures against the Pyongyang authorities as a logical reaction to the methodical uh, uh, continuation of uh, uh, the country's uh, ballistic and nuclear program. Indeed, the launch of ballistic missiles conducted by North Korea on the 3rd and the 28th of July of this year in, in deliberate violation of the relevant resolutions of the Security Council as well as of the Non-Proliferation Treaty, represents a very serious threat to the peace and security on the Korean Peninsula and uh, beyond that peninsula. It is also a direct threat to, uh, uh, to uh, maritime navigation and uh, to a threat to the uh, thousands of people who live and work in the region. Uh, in that there were no there were no warnings of these launches, uh, uh, and uh, these these launches uh, uh, have uh, uh, gone way beyond the uh, maritime space, the maritime areas, the mar the uh, the ju maritime jurisdiction of this country, and. Uh, uh, that represents a serious threat. Senegal would like to express its very serious concern about these uh, uh, actions, and we would echo the words of our Secretary General, uh, uh, who called for uh, North Korea to fully uh, live up to its international obligations in this area in a clear, irreversible, and verifiable way. Mr. President, uh, the Sen delegation of Senegal, aware of all this, voted in favor of Resolution 2371. This uh, resolution, in addition to freezing assets uh, and uh, a ban uh, on travel of certain individuals and entities, imposes bans on the uh, export of coal, iron ore, iron, as well as restrictions to, uh, on access to the banking system. The delegation of Senegal uh, will await for the report of the Security Council that... Uh, the Security Council has uh, requested from the Sanctions Committee uh, pursuant to Resolution 1718 uh, to provide it uh, to submit this report within 15 days. And this report should uh, highlight the additional topics related to proliferation and uh, conventional weapons that could be added to the consolidated list of the measures that have already been taken. Another important element which uh, led to the positive vote of Senegal has to do with the fact that the resolution reaffirms the concern of the Council to avoid any negative humanitarian consequences of the measures uh, adopted on the North Korean civilian population on the on normal economic activities, on, on cooperation, or on uh, the provision of food assistance. Senegal welcomes the, the exemptions granted to activities carried out by consular and diplomatic missions established in the DPRK, as well as exemptions related to humanitarian assistance provided by the United Nations or in coordination with the United Nations. Mr. President, the delegation of Senegal would like to reiterate that this uh, a series of targeted measures taken in order to respond to the challenge represented by the North Korean nuclear and ballistic program m must be part and parcel of a global strategy, a political strategy, aiming at uh, uh, bringing the parties to the uh, table of di uh, negotiations uh, with a view to a political solution. This is why I would like to reiterate the attachment of my country to a political and diplomatic solution to this uh, uh, issue, and we would like to support uh, our uh, express our support for six-party talks to achieve a denuclearization of the uh, Korean Peninsula and to uh, promote peaceful coexistence of the region and uh, um, on the basis of full respect for uh, the, each other's sovereignty, based on the uh, joint declaration of the 19th of September of 2005. We would like to conclude by reiterating our call to the members of the Security Council and to the, in, to the uh, international community to uh, launch this uh, phase uh, of dialogue with a view to a final sol uh, to a solution of the situation in the North Korean pen on the Korean Peninsula. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Senegal for his statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of Sweden. Uh, Mr. President, 
Sweden welcomes the adoption of today's resolution. It shows that the Council continues to stand united and that we are fully determined to deal with the growing threat posed by the DPRK's nuclear and missile programs. With this vote, the UN Security Council continues to take its responsibility and assert its authority on a situation that jeopardizes international peace and security. The latest missile test, again of intercontinental range, is yet another breach of DPRK's international obligations and in defiance of numerous Security Council resolution. This is a cause of utmost concern for the region and indeed for the whole world. The potential dangers are evident and the threat is growing. We express our deepest solidarity with the neighboring countries and their peoples living under the constant shadow of the DPRK's threatening behavior. Sweden therefore condemns the latest tests in the strongest possible terms. We reiterate our call on the DPRK to seize all development of its ballistic missiles and nuclear weapons program. We urge them to take immediate steps towards complete, verifiable and irreversible dismantlement of the program in accordance with relevant Security Council resolutions. We further call on the DPRK to speedily and unconditionally re-engage in a meaningful and credible dialogue with the international community with a view to fulfilling the obligations laid out by this Council. The international community must, on its part, redouble efforts to effectively and fully implement current resolutions and to act swiftly to implement the new sanctions adopted today. All UN member states must do their utmost in this regard. At the same time, Mr. President, sanctions alone will never solve this situation. Sanctions must be accompanied by dialogue and confidence-building measures to reach a long-term and sustainable solution. There is an urgent need to avoid escalation and to take steps to prepare for a peaceful, diplomatic and comprehensive solution to the situation on the Korean Peninsula and for the wider region. It is also of key importance to re-establish inter-Korean communication channels. As a member of the Neutral Nations Supervisory Commission, Sweden strongly encourages the DPRK to resume contact and cooperation with the Commission at the border station in Panmunjom. This would contribute to reducing tensions and increase trust and transparency. We must contribute to finding diplomatic openings and we welcome all initiatives to facilitate a peaceful and comprehensive solution through dialogue. As we have said previously in this Council, it is deeply worrying that tensions have continued to rise in recent months and the potential for mistakes, misunderstandings and miscalculations is high. A regional security mechanism should be the medium-term goal. Mr. President, there is no military solution to this situation. We strongly support today's resolution and stand firmly united with Council members in condemning DPRK's actions. But in parallel, creative diplomatic uh, diplomacy to achieve dialogue and negotiations is also urgently needed. We call again on the DPRK to re-engage in a credible and meaningful dialogue with the international community. I thank you. أشكر السيد ممثل السويد على إحاطته. أعطي الكلمة الآن إلى السيد. I thank the representative of Sweden for his statement, and I give the floor to the representative of Italy. Italy welcomes the unanimous adoption of the resolution 2371. We recognize the role of the leadership played by the United States in this dossier, and the, we thank the U.S. mission for their restless effort to bring us to this important result today. Today, the Security Council is once again, the second time in 2017, sending an unequivocal message to the PRK. The international community is united in condemning North Korea's increasing provocation and is determined to confront this new level of threat to international peace and security by taking further action. As demonstrated by the latest intercontinental ballistic missile launches, which Italy condemned 
in the strongest terms, North Korea is advancing illegally towards an operational nuclear activity capability, severely undermining our collective security and the global non-proliferation regime. This is an extraordinary situation that calls for proportional measures. The resolution that we adopted today provides for the broadest, most comprehensive set of sanctions ever applied by the Council in many years. It will remain in force for as long as the DPRK continues to push nuclear weapons and their means of delivery. We therefore urge the North Korean regime to take immediate measures to abandon its nuclear and ballistic missile, missile programs in a complete, verifiable and irreversible manner. In consultation with the key partners, Italy also stands ready at the appropriate term to support additional autonomous and strategic measures in the European Union context. We reaffirm that the Security Council concern is directed toward the DPRK government and not its people, who continue to suffer as the resources are diverted away from economic development toward military, nuclear, and ballistic missile programs. As in the past, we will remain vigilant uh, in order to ensure that these new restrictive measures do not have any adverse consequences for an humanitarian perspective. While increasing pressure on, uh, on North Korea and leadership at this juncture is essential, we call on DPRK to make credible progress on its obligation to denuclearize enabling negotiation leading to a possible solution, as stated in the European Union Foreign Affairs Council conclusion of the last 17th of July. In this regard, Italy reaffirms that sanctions are not an end in themselves, but a means to promote the DPRK's full compliance. Finally, as chair of the 1718 Committee, allow me to restate Italy's unwearing commitment to full and effective implementation of all Security Council resolutions on the DPRK. We will reach out to the Vulian membership in order to ensure that these latest measures are applied quickly and comprehensively. Thank you, Mr. President. أشكر السيد ممثل إيطاليا على إحاطته. أعطي الكن. I thank the representative of Italy, and I now give the floor to the representative of Ethiopia. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, we welcome the unanimous adoption of Resolution 2371, condemning in the strongest terms the continuing ballistic missile tests conducted by the DPRK in violation of various Security Council resolutions. This step today, imposing additional sanction measures as a consequence, is therefore proper. It's important that we continue maintaining the unity of the Council in addressing this problem. In our view, this is perhaps the most critical factor that may ensure a breakthrough eventually, if, in addition, the matter is handled with a great deal of care and wisdom. The nuclear and ballistic missile-related programs of the DPRK pose serious threats to regional and international peace and security. It is absolutely important that the DPRK immediately seize these provocative actions to reduce the tension in the Korean Peninsula and prevent its further escalation. That is why we believe taking the measure the Council took today was made unavoidable. It is becoming all the more apparent, Mr. President, that this situation could get out of hand if it's not managed properly. We believe it is important to make additional efforts to try to open up possibilities for a diplomatic path toward the resolution of a problem which is indeed both complex and dangerous. One thing is undeniable. And on this, all reasonable people must agree. And that is, there is a need for channels of communication to avoid the risk of miscalculation and reduce tensions in the Korean Peninsula. That is why we believe there is an urgent need for finding a lasting, comprehensive political and diplomatic solution to the DPRK issue through dialogue and negotiation. It is indeed a good thing that the just adopted resolution takes this into account. This requires that the DPRK returns to its international commitments on denuclearization and fully comply with the relevant resolutions of the Security Council. Finally, 
The latest ballistic missile launch by the DPRK remind us that the full implementation of the Council's resolutions by all member states is much more critical now than ever before. We believe that the 1718 Committee and panel of experts which supports the committee will continue to play a critical role in this regard, and they should be encouraged to further strengthen their engagement with member states improve implementation of the measures. Let me conclude by reaffirming once again the continue to work towards the full implementation of these Security Council resolutions, including the one that we have adopted today. I thank you, Mr. President. I say this Safir Mumethil Ethiopia I thank the Ambassador of Ethiopia for his statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Kazakhstan. We support adoption of this resolution which envisage tough sanctions as a means to persuade Pyongyang to change its course in favor of a nuclear weapon-free future. The resolution also leaves room for the resumption of dialogue or a six-party mechanism for negotiations. Kazakhstan strongly condemns irresponsible and dangerous the international range ballistic missile launches of North Korea that undermine our common international efforts to strengthen regional and ultimately international peace and security. Such actions are in serious violation of UN Security Council resolutions and pose a threat to peace. Furthermore, they destabilize the situation in the Northeastern Asian region as well as globally. The irresponsible policy of the DPRK negatively affects the global process of nuclear non-proliferation and undermines our collective efforts to ensure a nuclear weapon-free future of the planet. We urge the DPRK to abandon its nuclear ambitions for the sake of security and development of its people, and also for the benefit of all humankind. The threat of the missile and nuclear program of the DPRK makes it imperative for all parties concerned to intensify their efforts to find a mutually acceptable solution through the early resumption of negotiations. A solution to this situation is possible only through dialogue and not through any military strategy triggered by the provocative actions of the North Korean authorities. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Kazakhstan and I give the floor to the representative of Japan. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Japan welcomes the unanimous adoption of Resolution 2371. We would like to express our appreciation to the United States for taking the lead. We also would like to thank all other members of the Council for their support and hard work to make today's adoption possible. The need for the Security Council to strongly condemn North Korea's nuclear tests and ballistic missile launches have considerably grown in the past year and a half. Since January 2016, North Korea has conducted two nuclear tests and launched approximately 40 ballistic missiles. The sheer number and frequency show how unprecedented and unacceptable these provocations are. Not only is the quantity outrageous, the qualitative advancements are also deeply alarming. Just last month, we saw two ballistic missile launches with intercontinental range. The second launch was already more technologically advanced than the first. The footage broadcast on Japanese television of the most recent launch showed that it was visible with the naked eye in Hokkaido as it fell into the sea off the coast of Japan. If it had not been for such a lofted launch, the missile range would have cover, uh, covered half the globe. It is abundantly clear that this is not merely a regional threat, but an imminent global threat to all member states. North Korea seems determined to continue its nuclear buildup. In March 2016, 
the Security Council responded to the fourth nuclear test by adopting Resolution 2270, the most comprehensive to that date, with a clear message to North Korea that it must halt its nuclear development. After the fifth nuclear test in September 2016, the Security Council sent an even stronger message via Resolution 2321. Nevertheless, North Korea has continued to ignore the calls of the international community by obstinately forging ahead with its nuclear and missile development programs. This had led to the adoption of Resolution 2371 today. The resolution is very impactful and will reduce the revenue of the North Korean regime by approximately $1 billion. This robust resolution is an urgent call for North Korea to change its behavior. It is clear to everyone at this point that North Korea is nowhere near to resuming a meaningful dialogue. In order to change North Korea's behavior, we have no choice but to continue to increase pressure. All members of the United Nations must demonstrate renewed commitment to rigorously and thoroughly implementing this existing, the existing Security Council resolutions, including the one we just adopted. Japan will continue to work very closely with the Council members and all the member states to reach a comprehensive solution to the problems related to North Korea. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to thank the Ambassador of Japan and I give the floor to the Ambassador of Bolivia. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, Bolivia would like to reiterate its strongest and uh, condemnation uh, regarding uh, the conduct of uh, nuclear uh, tests and the launch of ballistic missiles by the DPRK. We'd like to make a call, appeal to this country to abandon its nuclear and ballistic missile program in a full, verifiable and irreversible way. Bolivia voted in favor of the present resolution, motivated by its pacifist ideals. We do our country doesn't believe in war as a, a means of uh, solving uh, global problems that the international community is uh, confronting. Uh, Mr. President, the plurinational uh, state of Bolivia doesn't consider that sanctions should be an end in itself. Uh, in fact, uh, sanctions should uh, contribute to helping the parties involved to uh, uh, to return to uh, uh, dialogue and sanctions uh, that are adopted today should have the least possible impact on the civilian population of North Korea. Mr. President, we urge all, all the uh, parties involved to uh, avoid an escalation, a rhetorical escalation in actions that could uh, uh, raise tensions and uh, 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 put at risk international peace and security on the Korean Peninsula. We welcome and uh, would like to express our support to the Chinese initiative of dual suspension that should lead to a, a simultaneous uh, sus uh, suspension both in the launch of ballistic missiles and nuclear tests as well as the conduct of military exercises on the Korean Peninsula. We also I welcome the fact that the resolution adopted uh, today unanimously includes support and the a request for renewal of six-party talks. Uh, we also would like to make a call to all the parties involved to rule out any uh, military type of uh, solution and uh, to return uh, to uh, the path of dialogue in order to achieve a peaceful diplomatic and, and political solution. Mr. Uh, uh, President, as our, in our capacity as chair of the 1540 committee, we would like to uh, state that that uh, what is uh, provided for in Resolution 1540 uh, constitutes a platform for assistance and cooperation uh, in order to prevent non-state actors from obtaining weapons of mass destruction. We are completely against using this platform as a mechanism to of uh, using coercion or a channel of sanctions against uh, member states of the United Nations. Lastly, 
Bolivia once again would like to express its categorical rejection uh, of the imposition of unilateral uh, sanctions. This is a flagrant violation of international law. These are illegal measures that expand the uh, domestic legislation and jurisdiction of a state over another state, thus undermining the sovereignty and territorial integrity of states. Thank you. I thank the Ambassador of Bolivia, and I now give the floor to... I will now deliver a statement in my national capacity. Permanent representatives, ladies and gentlemen, Egypt joins the unanimous agreement, international agreement, and adopted and vote in favor of the resolution adopted today based on our consistent commitment to upholding the credibility of the nuclear non-proliferation system as well as the credibility of the Security Council. We are convinced of the importance uh, of the Security Council, that uh, the importance for all UN bodies and for all international stakeholders to deliver on their mission and to uphold their responsibility in a manner reflective of what has been done by Egypt. We are further convinced of the importance of dealing in as stringent a manner all serious threats to nuclear non-proliferation. Furthermore, we uphold the universality of this treaty without any double standards. Egypt is aware of the threat of recurrent violations by the North Korea of Security Council resolutions. This constitutes a threat to international peace and, and regional peace and security. In this regard, Egypt reaffirms its hope to see all stakeholders join hands to peacefully settle the situation plaguing the North Korean Peninsula and to work together to exercise restraint as well as to adopt reciprocal de-escalation measures as well as to pave the way for a return to the negotiating table so as to uphold the interests of all and to safeguard international peace and security. Egypt once again welcomes any initiative or any constructive idea that can, through negotiations and dialogue, that can move us closer to denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and move us towards a lasting peace in the peninsula or reunification. Thank you. I go back uh, to my role as president of the council and I now give the floor to the representative of the Republic of Korea. President, first of all, I'd like to thank you for convening today's meeting and for inviting my delegation to participate in this important meeting. The DPRK once again has turned the deaf ear to the stern warnings of the international community and responded with even more serious provocations. Coupled with its nuclear program, the DPRK's missile provocations on July 4th and subsequently July 28th indeed pose a grave threat to international peace and security that requires concerted actions at the global level. Such reckless acts of defiance to the repeated calls of the international community should be met with stronger measures so that the DPRK bears the consequences of its flagrant violations of international norms and obligations. It is for this reason that the Republic of Korea welcomes and fully supports the unanimous adoption of Resolution 2371. Taking this opportunity, I would like to thank the United States for its leadership and commitment, as well as all of the other members of the Council, including China, for their spirit of cooperation. Resolution 2371 introduces robust measures for a sectoral ban that will significantly cut off the inflow of hard currency into the DPRK, which might otherwise be diverted to its illicit WMD program. We believe that these measures will significantly contribute to curbing the DPRK's ability to further develop its WMD-related activities. By unanimously adopting this resolution today, the Security Council has once again demonstrated that the international community will remain strongly united in its commitment to stop the DP DPRK's reckless and destabilizing behavior. In order to pressure the DPRK to change its course 
full and thorough implementation of the Security Council's multiple sanctions resolutions is important more than anything else. The Republic of Korea will remain committed to supporting other member states in their ongoing efforts to fully and effectively implement these resolutions, including Resolution 2071 adopted today. Mr. President, Pyongyang still seems to be operating under the delusion that its nuclear and ballistic missile programs offer insurance for its security. On the contrary, however, its obsessive pursuit of such programs will only serve to strengthen the already firm resolve of the international community. No matter how far the DPRK moves in its pursuit of nuclear ambition, our resolve to stop this will never diminish. Pyongyang should therefore refrain from further testing our robust collective resolve. And I sincerely hope that by choosing the path towards denuclearization, the DPRK will eventually stand on the right side of history. Thank you very much. I would like to thank the uh, ambassador of the Republic of Korea for the statement. It's the last name on the list of speakers. Uh, the meeting is adjourned.